Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. Hey, you all doing? Welcome back to some more Hearts of Iron 4 here today on the channel. We're going to be starting a brand new series on the Millennium Dawn Modern Day mod. We're playing as the United Kingdom, so if you like the sound of that, feel free to leave the video a like and subscribe if you're new. I'd really much appreciate it. Alright, let's get stuck into it. Alrighty, we're going to be kicking things off in 2017, playing as Theresa May. Now, I have gone into the settings and changed one thing only, and that is that NATO has been disbanded. Because I think it slows down sort of the essence of Hearts of Iron 4. CSTO is still here, we've still got the Axis, and I think that's the only other faction in the game. But we're going to have a lot of European wars and a lot of um, factions being formed. So, I guess in this alternative timeline, NATO was never formed as a military alliance. The... EU is still a thing, of course. All right, so national focus-wise, uh, what should we start with? I think just the future of Britain is a good idea. That will easily give us 150 political power. The ideology foundation of Britain is one of deep belief in personal freedom, democracy, and something called the Anglo-Saxon principles <laughs> and uh, are admired across the world. Nice, okay. So let's have a look at our national statistics and internal factions. So we're a pluralist pluralist society we have stable growth in 2017 because this is like pre-brexit <laughs> medium corruption at four international bankers have influence in the uk along with the military industrial complex and the intelligence agency we have a basic civil administration a small military spending we probably should at least move that to a medium uh, high police and intelligence funding, that's fine. We could drop that if we need to. Higher education focus, we could nearly put that up to free universal uh, um, education. Uh, basic universal healthcare, that's fine. Let's make that a little bit lower. Defund the NHS. <laughs> we are the Tories, after all. Welfare state is fine. And all of this military service is fine as well. Alright, so we can retire Theresa May as leader hmm we could do that or maybe it's a part of the tech tree i was just trying do we bring in boris boris johnson in early um i don't think so man this tech tree is so massive and extensive um intelligence agency oh yes let's create mi6 <laughs> how is that not being created okay tech wise let's have a look at what we're working with so we're currently producing the 1995 l8a2 a bullpup rifle, um, not the best, <laughs> I think a lot of uh, British forces hate this, the special forces don't usually use it that much, so do we do we upgrade it, we're still using that all the way to 2030, yikes, um, when can we get this, 2005, so let's get a better, better quality rifle with our infantry, uh, what do we got here, night vision, or oh, yeah, getting really high tier night vision will be good, if we're fighting on a land war in Europe, uh, what have we got? We've got the Reckies, the Land Rovers. So we currently have the Challenger 2. The Challenger 15. Is this the one with uranium rounds? Oh, wow, that looks sick. I love the 3D model. All right, let's go with that. Uh, we've got the Boxer. That's just for our mechanized vehicles. Artillery, Braveheart. Okay, I was going to say, it's probably not a bad idea to up our artillery as... Artillery wars are sort of the main thing going on at the moment. It's probably not a bad idea to do that. All right, what do we got? We've got the Carl Gustav. God. Sweden is such a nice and peaceful place, but them and Saab make some of the most deadly weapons known to man. Ah, welcome to Sweden. We have universal healthcare, yes, and uh, we have really good javelins. <laughs> and uh, uh, submarines. Oh, God. Love it. They can be so peaceful like that because they know they're not going to get <laughs> harangued with, harassed with. Um, right, what else have we got here? Uh, the US Navy, sorry, the UK Navy. Should we try and get a cruiser hull? Hmm. We do want to try and rule the waves like back in the day. The typhoon system. Do we even need that? We could just get our own. We could just even talk to the US about getting F-16s and F-35s. Through the global market, potentially. Oh, no. Maybe producing our own UAVs is pretty smart. They're quite expendable. Um, oh, we haven't even got a close range support. Seriously? I know we've got a lot of systems coming in. 
Um, and we haven't really gone down. Like, I think we can go with um, some robotic. That's going to take 500 days. Like, our industry isn't terrible. A lot of this is going to take so long anyway. We are preparing for a European land war. Sooner rather than later. And then we're obviously a nuclear power. Um, maybe we do chuck one of these into those robotics, I think, is what I wanted to go with. Yeah, early AI robotics. Let's go with that. Okay, recruitment-wise, we have the Assault Air Brigade. Um, I could change some of these divisions at some point, but I think it's fine. Okay, let's have a look at our construction. So let's go and build some civvy factories in Britain. Let's build one in Greater London and here. That's fine for now. Production-wise... Oh, wow, we haven't got anything in production, so we'll do that eventually. Getting some small arms... And tanks, aviation. Okay, so we can do that a bit later. Uh, logistics at the moment. We currently have 227 main battle tanks and over 1,000 armored personnel characters. Really? And then 400 IVFs, infantry fighting vehicles. We need heaps more artillery. We need heaps more su support equipment. And then you just 600 man pads, 600 javelins. Oh, we do have 100 artillery pieces. 4K rifles. Got some recon. 91. We need to make our air force a lot bigger. Oh, we've got nine AWACs. That's good. That'll give us some really nice aerial intel. Um, I guess we need to get up our officer cores and then this stuff. I think we just... Do they have a first strike doctrine like France? I actually don't even know. Does it actually... Oh, here it is. So what is the UK's nuclear doctrine? First strike, alert. First strike, all raise. Retaliatory strike. They don't have a retaliatory strike policy. Interesting. Okay. Um, so, dockyards as well. We can deal with all this in a bit. Alright. So, territory-wise, what do we actually own as the UK? So... What is actually technically a part of what we own? So, obviously, Wales, England, Scotland. <laughs> we could technically release some factions if we wanted to. Cyprus. Oh, okay, so we can actually see here. Isle of Man, Cyprus, Scotland, Wales, St. Helena. Okay, so we've got Northern Ireland as well. If I go back to this view, it's a bit easier to see. So, we've got some... I've obviously got the Falklands down here. What's this? South Georgia Island. As if that's a place. <laughs> St. Helena's here. Um, or Helena. Uh, do we actually control this? No. We might have a military presence there, potentially. Alright. Uh, what else did I want to look at? Yeah, maybe they've got some small islands over here and stuff as well. Alright, so let's have a look. So in 2017... What wars are currently going on? So, we've got this war in the north over here. I'm sure we'll send some volunteers to go and back the northern government against those in the south. We've got a civil war here. Seriously? Between the Maoist communists. So Libya stuff's going on. Um, oh, yeah, these guys. I forgot about these dudes. Uh, anything else? We've got this going on. Some stuff going on down in Africa. Alrighty, uh, let's have a look at our budget. Population tax, corporate tax. So at the moment, we're only losing like 3 billion. So that's nothing crazy. We will need to eventually, once those civilian factories are done, getting some office sectors in. That will allow us to generate a lot of cash. Let's actually do that now, matter of fact. What's this ledger here? Oh, okay. So this gives me a little bit of war support and an idea of like other countries' population. Oh, wow. It actually has it here. Okay. So we're starting to offer other nations access and to benefit from our civilian GNSS network. Okay. Just moving troops to the border of Northern Ireland.
Okay. Uh, Nepal lost that war. Still not over here just yet. I wonder if factions will start making... Or nations will start making factions at some point. Okay. MI6, the intelligence agency, is now being complete. Nice. Our research that we set up is coming along swimmingly. Trade-wise. Oh, that was something I didn't dive into, but I think it's okay. We're currently getting 32 petroleum, 76 light materials, 1 rubber, 7 technology metals, 99 steel, for precious metals. Okay. Now that this is all loading through. Okay, the construction's coming along. Alright, production-wise. We're currently focusing on getting one MBT law a day. 77 small arms. Ah, finally, the Afghanis have accepted our... Divisions, they're going to arrive there shortly. Looks like Georgia, Italy, and Germany are sent help. The United States has a military base, and they've arrived. Nice. And we should be able to see and help out over here. Okay, so how well are the Northerners doing here? They've lost 188. We do outnumber them divisions-wise. Germany is also sending military forces. Okay, so our British 20th, 20th Armour Brigade is now in the north. They're going to get some valuable experience. We've got the Italians helping out here as well. We actually seem to be pushing there quite well. With German panzer support. The Brits and the Germans fighting side by side. Yeah, with American armor we should be okay. I just hope the regime is more stable than it is in real life, of course. Alright, we've also got a... Oh, so we actually are going with the F-35 Lightning. Yeah, that was actually a better decision rather than the typhoons I think getting a 2010 Corvette we're also getting high quality 2010 attack submarines 2010 attack frigate 2010 missile submarine and a 2005 destroyer and we're slowly but surely building up those logistics we sent some military aid to Somalia. That should help out. We brought in Nick Carter as the new army commander. Philip Jones as the naval commander. And Stephen Hellier, or Stephen Hellier. All right, that fire control, getting high quality, better artillery has now been done. So what's going on down here? Yeah. So they're a non-aligned government. As long as they're dealing with the... Pirates down here, you could say. That's what we want to do. Benjamin Bathurst is doing a good job. Okay. So, at the moment, 22% world tension. 1% on our side. 700 losses to the northerners. 3k now to the south. How's air support doing? We can't tell. We should have air support over the top, though. You'd think. Okay. Now, I'm curious to see if I should have turned the European Union off. Although we don't have NATO as a proper military alliance. The EU can... I think there is a part of the tech tree that... um. The EU can have a standing army. Okay, so Abkhazia has joined CSTO. As Georgia declares war upon them. Uh-oh. So we've got a fight in the Caucasus here. 
Georgia was ultimately puppeted by who? Oh no. By Mr. Bad Guy himself. <laughs> oh no, it's all controlled. Yikes. That's another thing as well. You can turn NATO off, but you can't actually control... You turn CSTO off, which is disappointing. Uh, what's going on down over here? Nothing's changed, ultimately. Okay. They're not going to last down here much longer, you would imagine. Oh, my God. What's this? The US 1st Division is just charging through. The more of these smaller wars we can wrap up, the better. Okay, so we've gone Vitalized Westminster. Still have Theresa May. We're currently getting a better quality FV 510 Warrior. Still going with the Challenger. We're also going to get third gen scanning. Whoa, that's a big development. As if they just did that in 2017. Oh, yikes. Was anyone guaranteeing their independence? Oh my god. As if they've just gone and done it. Hmm. Is everyone going to sit and watch? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, China, Hong Kong, Macau against them. <gasps> they've lost 13k already. I think they're landing in the island as well. <gasps> they've landed in the south. Oh my god, no. The valuable computer chip factories. <laughs> You'd nearly think if this was happening in the US, we'd probably strike them. <laughs> so they wouldn't have it. Oh my god. Alright. Oh, now the Middle East. So, interesting. Oh, wow, well, I'm going to have to see that. So, I've divided up my forces here. We've got two units in South America. We've still got the... Why can't I ping to it? Why wouldn't let me ping to it? There we go. The Afghani volunteers. I still have some units stationed in Gibraltar, which we own. And then, got the majority of our forces in and around the UK. Okay, back down here. So what so what happened? Oh no, they just straight up caught it. Yikes. Oh no, we've helped we've won there now. And those units have now left. Okay. So we've helped there. Interesting. Um well, that's changed things. As if they took it in 2017. What the heck? All right. Theresa May in the Conservative Party has 92%, followed by... Okay, so these are the parties below. Labour has 32, Greens have 55, UKIP 1.3. The Nationalist Outlook and some of the others is even lower. She's currently seeking political reform. Our ministers are somewhat ineffective. With just the right amount of reforms, we might be able to resolve those issues, getting a 50% political power. So we can expand the Home Office potentially, the NHS, or even the uh, Foreign Office. At the moment, the UK is operating with 21 divisions, 81 battalions in total, and 33 special forces, making up 12 art, uh, light infantry, 4 special operation forces, and 3 armoured. Alright, looks like we're going to go back to Afghanistan, by the look of it, as another tribal uprising has happened. Okay, what was going on down in Venezuela there? As things are starting to hop and up, hot, hot and up, we're at 54%. Okay. Oh, wow, this has actually expanded quite a bit. 
So Argentina is at war with Venezuela. And it seems like most of the world is actually backing Guyana. The Republic of China has declared war upon Mongolia. Where is the Republic of China now? Oh, are they down here? <laughs> the Taiwanese fled to the Taping Island. What? They somehow took an island in the South China Sea in some of these little reefs here, I think. That's kind of cool. The Spratleys. <gasps> Uh-oh. Guys, what's happening in the Balkans? Oh no. Oh no, back into Sarajevo. Okay. So Serbia's at it again. So who's backing who? So Belgium and Norway is supporting Serbia. Seriously? Of course. <laughs> Pretty on brand. Incredibly relevant to the time and recording of this video. Oh, yikes. Okay. Oh my god. That was quick. The UK, US, Sweden. Okay, so we're actually Garrett. Oh, I don't know if we're going to be able to help them there. They're about to get destroyed. Okay. Bosnia was puppeted. So what's happened over here? So they don't actually occupy it. They've given it back to Abbas. And are now puppeting them. Okay, so they're going with like a two-state solution. Instead of controlling all of it. Interesting. So it looks like the UK is going to be... And Theresa May is going to be more... For future enlargement of the European Union. Fifty-seven percent now. Looks like they dealt with those tribal warriors. The UK is currently expanding their industrial biofuel processing and also allowing the infantry to get automatic rifles. South Ossetia joins CSTO. Iraq joins the Axis. And has that changed things over here? Oh, right. They're still dealing with these baddies. And then we have a, a Kurdish state. Interesting. Oh, nice. Those UAVs have now been complete. And now we can free up going into more fuel refining construction and modern special forces as well oh no they joined syria joined as well this is starting to expand quite a bit what are these guys doing sitting and watching as always as we move into april 2018 no major european powers are doing wars China's doing their thing. Okay. We're going with the future of the NHS. So, we can decide on its future. Interesting. Intelligence-wise, we're currently sending operatives to... What is this country? St. Kitts? I don't even know where that is. I think we've upped our light materials because our construction's still going. No, it's the um, production. Whoa! Vietnam declares war upon the Philippines. As if. Does anyone Is anyone going to get involved in that? <gasps> China declared war upon India. <laughs> oh, no. That's a big one. I want to see how this goes out. Alright. This actually might get some major powers involved. 
Somalia was liberated. Nice. China is being hyper aggressive in this. They've already conquered Taiwan and now they're at war with India. How are they going to go about that? Okay, so let's have a look at this then. Uh, where is it? Oh, has it been lumped into that? No. So the Philippines. Yeah, here we go. The Indian... The Sino-Indian War. The second. So, India... Has... 90k divisions. 148 factories. Oh... 3k. So population-wise, it's going to be probably quite even. Oh, no. China could potentially outnumber them 2 to 3 to 1. And they probably can outproduce them that as well. Oh, no. Everyone's getting involved. Turkey declared war upon Greece. This one's going to be interesting as well. I'll go back to this in a sec. So, yeah, not having NATO, everything just goes a bit... Nuts, which I like. <laughs> we'll see if we can get involved in any of these. Okay, so, so far... No one's really sending aid to them. It's really Mongolia only helping them. So it looks like everyone's sort of staying out of this. Oh, China is advancing down here. Oh my god, they actually might reach Bangladesh. Alright, back going over to the Turks. Okay. So, it just looks like the Saudis are supporting Erdogan. Okay. Back over to Greece. The Iraqis and the Colombians are supporting them. Alright, let's have a look at this. The Turkish-Greek War. Yikes, they've lost 14k to their 8. Divisions-wise, it's actually quite close. But at the moment, Turkey probably just has the production over them. I would imagine the... Gr oh, I think the Navy... Oh, the, the Greek Navy probably shouldn't be slept on. Alright. Oh, wow. So it looks like... Theresa May will be trying to leave the European Union. And she will be expanding the Foreign Office. Getting some better quality Special Forces. Oh, our precious minerals went down there. Where are we getting most of our stuff from? Can I actually see? No, is it going to tell me? No. Okay, so we're getting our rubber mostly from Brazil and Cameroon. Our technology metals are mostly coming from Peru, the Congo, Canada, and the United States, which is understandable. Interesting, our precious metals are not coming from an African country. They're coming from Canada. There's a fair few mines in Canada, a lot of gold mines, you tend to forget. Okay, so they are trying to push over to Alexandropolis. But there's a river crossing here. Oh, wow. Delhi has fallen to the Chinese, would you believe it? What's going to happen here? They're just going to annex India? Oh, my God. I can't believe it. I haven't seen China be this aggressive. Oh, my God. They're carving them up. They've lost 180k to 28k. What is happening? And no one's really getting involved as well. Of course. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. Looks like there's only one state here now. Interesting. China did a naval invasion in Kolkata. Oh, it was actually puppeted in the end. They changed the leader. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen here. Seems like the Greeks are holding out more against the Turks than what I would have thought. Dude, what are they going to do? Are they going to put in an Indian si um, sympathizer or are they going to try and conquer it? 
Bro, this is not good. There's only 2018. But like I said, most of the major European powers are still yet to get involved. Greeks have lost 40k to the 20k Turks. Oh no, 55%. Wait, hang on. 55 is going 55% in favor of the defenders. Wait, did India attack them? I thought it was China. Bro, half of India is just under their control. I wonder if they'll give some stuff to Pakistan or something. Looks like things are starting to make a little bit more shape in the Middle East. Oh wait, they left the Axis there. After they threw out their rebels. Interesting. Okay. Still have a population of 227k manpower. Army still the same. Navy, 8 fleets the British have. 13 frigates, 8 destroyers, 7 attack submarines, 4 missile subs, 3 helicopter operation ships, 2 carrier craft, 1 corvette. Air Force wise, the UK has 7 air wings, 150 in service air superiority fighters. There's your F-35s. 70 attack helicopters. Yeah, so it's really 50 strike fighters. Interesting. Okay, so she's going with Britain first and she's embracing European skepticism as... Oh my god. So India has ultimately been puppeted by a communist regime. <laughs> oh no, we're well, technically emerging. The Communist Party of India. Would you believe it? So are they now in a faction properly? No. Oh no. I want to see how this plays out then. As we go into 2019. Oh, crikey. So we've got this Chinese conglomerate puppeting India. So these two are going to be fighting on each other's side. We've got CSTO. How is the Europeans and NATO, if it ever gets formed, going to deal with this? What the hell is Salika? Okay. Random state. Right, I haven't really been looking around the other countries. So Emmanuel Macron is currently ruling at France. Angela Merkel's still in charge. What's going on in the States? President Trump is guaranteeing the independence of Israel, South Korea, and Somalia. Okay. What's going on over here, actually? Oh, rip. Malcolm Turnbull's in charge. Apparently we have a base in the UAE. The US has s military bases in Australia. Interesting. Must be around here somewhere. Maybe up in the north. Wow. Looks like the majority of the other foreign powers have been the most interesting and aggressive actors. Syria declares war. What is it? Rover. Uh, okay. Oh shit, Germany's guaranteeing their independence. Yikes. It's like another smaller Kurdish stand. Oh wow, okay. There's all these small little states popping up here. Alright. So Theresa May is fully trying to withdraw from the European Union Treaty. Unfortunately, unfortunately doing so, the economy is now stagnated. She has, however, changed to an advanced universal health care. Right. 
Research wise, currently going with self self replicated 3D printer. Industrial production of nanofibers. Diplomacy and trade hasn't really changed. Those civilian construction buildings that I made in the south and southern England have nearly been complete. And then we'll be able to get some money back from those offices in Cornwall, southern England, eastern England, and Greater London. Production-wise, we're now being incredibly more efficient. We're making... 47 small arm rifles a day with no major war so we're building up within two years just sending foreign volunteers at the moment my god our spy got arrested <laughs> by saint kitts interesting all right we're currently getting a armored infantry brig brigade in, i can't even say brigade properly i don't know why in greater london and we're also getting infantry Logistics wise, 21 main battle tanks. Uh, Libya's doing stuff. Okay, our small arms has grown by 4,000 within two years, so that's quite extensive, which is nice. Alrighty, so now that the political landscape has changed, I can't believe it. The Communist Party of India is now a puppet of the Chinese. <laughs> what? Okay, this Greek-Turkish war. Oh, wow, it's actually becoming more of a stalemate than what I thought. 50k for the Greeks, 47 for the Turks. They haven't been able to penetrate into core... Greek mainland. They're still fighting over the river crossing between Andropolis. I wonder if anyone else is potentially going to get involved. Yeah, but some of these wars are really starting to quiet down. Oh, right, we've got this Vietnam-Philippines conflict. How is that going to go? Oh, maybe they're sort of fighting around the Spratleys. Oh, is that where it's probably taking... No, you're right. That's where it's... I'm right. That's where it's probably taking place. In and around these reefs for the control. Rather than... A huge and large naval invasion... From Vietnam into... Northern Philippines or... From the Philippines into Hanoi. Okay. Oh, what is this? I actually missed that. So yeah, Germany is currently at war with Syria and Iran because <laughs> they guaranteed the independence of Rovia. Okay. Maybe they've got a lot of ethnic people there in Germany. Okay. How are they going to deal with that? Yeah, Israel-Egyptian war. So they are at war with them. Palestine is their ally. Okay. Nothing's really changed on the border, I don't think. In the Negev Desert? No. Maybe Israel might retake the Sinai Peninsula, I don't know. Potentially. Alright. Imperial Industry. Seems like it's going to help the Turks, potentially. Building a civilian factory. We lose 8 billion because of it. Alright. We're going to expand the home office. We need to increase our political efforts at home in order to gain more control and possibilities of enforcing our laws on our territory, plus 50 political power. Oh, no, we have... Oh, that's where the force is. Well, I thought they were in the north. No, they're actually in this base in the south. Yes, right, because we we help... Um, okay, that yeah, so the Greeks, the Swiss, and the UK support Cyprus, southern Cyprus. 
as the Turks support the North. Interesting. I'm surprised nothing has erupted here, saying as this is going on. Very, very surprising. Alright, we sent some military aid to Malaysia. They still haven't capitulated yet. Okay. So she's managed to bring stable growth back to the European economy. She still seems to be quite popular. Even in this alternative timeline. An election won't be called till May 2022nd. Alright, so it looks like Syria won that war. And then I think that's probably saved the Germans, to be honest. No, there's still a war. How, how are these guys going to invade Germany? <laughs> Like, how? <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, God. 30% national outlook in Germany. Yikes. Okay. The expansion of the Home Office has nearly been complete. Nice. That is now done. Alright, what are we going for now? Freedom first. While security is an understandable concern, concern, giving the government control of civil life is not the answer. Whoa, looks like we've got a civil war in Serbia potentially. More madness going on in the Balkans. So this will give us a gain-based support of 500, which is nice. And a 2% change in popularity of the West. China declared war upon Japan. What? The intelligence community doesn't like us if we're going with freedom first, though. Alright, we'll go check out that Japan intervention in a moment, as I just quickly check down here. Oh god, everything's going crazy. Um. Oh, well, actually, they've thrown them out. Wait, no, there was a civil war and fracturing in Bosnia. Okay. But Serbia still puppets them. So there's a lot of factions puppeting each other, but not taking all of it. Alright, let's see what happens in Japan. Because... Japan has US bases there. How are they going to do this? Oh my god, that's massive. I would have thought that, um... The third Sino-Japanese war. Nice. <laughs> I would have thought, oh, China's going to have a hard task navally invading and dealing with Japan, but now with communist India on their side, they're building a eastern communist sphere of influence. Interesting. I'm surprised they went for Japan rather than focusing on maybe South Korea. It looks like logistically easier going through the north. January 2020. The Chinese have attacked the Japanese. We've got some small naval conflicts going on, which we can't see. I wish we could. Well, we're still trying to secure our home position and the home office. Alright, nice. Freedom first has now been completed. And now we're going to try and improve our imperial docks. Across our colonial past... We need to build outposts for our navy to build new warships, even if the home islands are under attack. So we get a plus five naval experience. The Falklands add a naval yard. And we get one building slot. The military industrial complex doesn't like it, which is surprising, I guess, because we're focusing on the navy. I'm not entirely sure. It does cost us eight billion, though, however. Still 87%. Oh no, the economy has switched to stagnation. That's disappointing. Alright, we're 21 days away from going with humanoid robotics. Our construction is doing okay. Nanofibers medicine, we'll go with that now. Just starting at 165 days. 
The fuel refining is nearly done. Excavation, 40 days. What's our diplomacy? Who hates us? Argentina, Iran, Northern Syria, Abkhazia. Canada, Germany, Australia, Belgium, Malta, Spain, New Zealand, like us. The US is not in the top six for whatever reason. I don't think our trade... Oh, okay, we're currently negotiating with Nigeria for the rubber. Doesn't look like any of this stuff is overly changed. Nice. We've started constructing those office sectors in Cornwall. It's going to take till May 2020 before it's complete. 70%. Production-wise... Oh, wow. Okay, that jumped up a bit. We're slowly but surely becoming incredibly efficient with our small arm production. So there's no harm in just building up our stockpiles. We don't continually need to be in an active war. Okay, so our divisions are now 34. Our battalions have gone up to 181. So we've increased that a bit. We're slowly but surely adding to our air wing capabilities and... naval forces. So I don't think China has been successful at all here. There's these tiny little Japanese islands down here. Senkaku. So there's Okinawa. I haven't been down these islands. I would love to go to Okinawa. I think it'd be so cool. Um, so when I went to Japan... I flew from this. This took. This was so. This is so crazy. So, we started off here in Tasmania, took a flight to Melbourne. So one took a flight to Sydney. <laughs> That's three. Took a flight from all the way from Sydney to Tokyo. <laughs> this took us like thirty six hours. Now because we're doing a like a month trip in Japan instead of doing like a two week in Tokyo. We wanted to go from north to south because it was going to get cold first. So then after instantly landing in Tokyo, we took a domestic flight all the way to Sapporo. <laughs> so it was, uh, I don't know how we didn't miss any connecting flights whatsoever. We're so fortunate. So Sapporo is awesome. Highly recommend it. I love Hokkaido. Probably one of my favorite places. Uh, then we went to, oh, what's this place called? Uh, uh, Otaru. Then we went to Hakodate, then we went to Amori, and then there's a little town here. Yeah, Amori. Almori. It sounds like it's an Italian name, but it's not. Uh, went to Morioka. God, Morioka is an absolute shithole. I, I am shocked at how bad it is. We, like, left there. I don't know who lives in Morioka, but Christ. Probably one of the worst places I went to. Sendai was awesome. We basically fled there. Um, I didn't go to Fukushima, Niigata. I sort of didn't go down this side. Went to Tokyo. Tokyo's incredibly overrated. Um, oh, Matsushima up here is like a little cool beach place. I highly recommend that. Like, basically everything in the north was so, so good. Like, real Japan. Um, there's another place we went to here. I can't remember what it was called. For the life of me. I think it was called... Oh. Oh, it's it's named... It's like um, It's a food that it's named after. I am completely... Forgetting the name of it. As Germany has accepted our military aid, which is nice. Oh, I'm forgetting it. I'm not going to remember. All right. Then went all the way from Tokyo to Kyoto, Osaka, and we did actually go to Fukuyama for a little bit. And went to went across this like bridge here, Hiroshima, and then went all the way back to Tokyo home. But yeah, no. Sapporo, Hakodate, super super underrated. Amazing. Sendai is awesome. Tokyo, meh. I just think it was just like, well, oh, I don't know. I think Tokyo is pretty, pretty overrated. Kyoto was amazing. Osaka was okay. Kind of cool. Hiroshima as well. 
But yeah, no, I definitely would have been disappointed if I only went to Tokyo on my trip. All right, August 2020 now. Let's have a look at some of these wars going on. Okay, the Greeks have blown 204. There? Oh, uh, oh, oh, hang on. Are they. <gasps> oh, I was going to say, like, why are they capitulating so quick? Oh my god. Unbelievable scenes. As the Turks couldn't get around from the this side, they actually navally invaded in Ionia. And now they're on the steps of Athens. Larissa has fallen. Oh no. The Greeks are about to capitulate. Oh, they held on for so long. Here come the Turks. Yikes. Japan's holding as well. They've only, oh, there's only just under a thousand loss. Whoa, 46k for the Egyptians. What the fuck? Is that just all in the cyanide, maybe? Malaysia and Singapore at war? Are you joking? How? Oh my god, they're pushed. No, they're not. Yes, yes, they are. They must have pushed two tiles. How, how, how is Singapore <laughs> throwing back Malaysia? As if. That's crazy. Even Malaysia is like split between here. I always forget about this little crazy country here, Brunei. Interesting. September now, 2020. Uh, a lot of these wars that are split over like multiple ranges is a little bit cringe. All right, Theresa May is enacting Fortify the Empire. As unfortunately, conservative party polling has slipped by 4%. Only three things are certain in life. Death, taxes, and that the Falkland Islands. <laughs> oh, God. We'll protect it. Well, Argentina's at war and they're doing some other stuff. So, they're going to fortify the empire. Add two land forts. Two coastal forts. Oh, God. Azerbaijan joined CSTO. That's not unsurprising. So that means they get three coastal forts and three in the South Georgia Islands. So that's kind of uh, sensible her she doing that. Uh, ooh, okay. So it looks like MI5 is expanding their military intelligence capacity in Italy. Why is that? I guess they're not aligned. Alright, research wise, currently going with the Stars Trek SPHMV and getting more Gimlars as well. The Gimlars are the mobile rocket artillery, similar that to the American HIMARS system. That's a smart play. Trade hasn't changed. Okay, so those officers in Cornwall have been completed. As the Greeks are holding on here, they're doing a final stand in. Thessaloniki and the UK army hasn't been deployed at all just yet still building up a mega stop stockpile as most of the Eastern Europeans and Chinese go cr in if our East Asian countries go crazy so it looks like the Japanese are kind of holding even though they're on a war footing nothing changing in the States Nationalist is growing and not a lined out look. Japan joins the Tansy Compact. Is that a faction? Yeah, okay. So they've joined that. So what's who's in this? Tans Tanzania. Tanzania. <laughs> Tanzania. What? Stands with Japan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some people get a little bit confused because I'm from Tasmania down here. They're like, oh, you're from 
Uh, Tanzania? Uh, no, I'm from here. Hobart, Launceston. They put Bernie on the map? Why? Uh, I guess there's like a deep sea port there. You'd think Devonport would be. Devonport's like a larger city. And where the spirit goes from to Melbourne. It goes to Geelong now? I don't know why. That's kind of whack. Greece was finally taken over and puppeted. Yikes. So what's happened here then? Amanwul Kolonomos. Moderate Islamic. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, because they're not aligned. So I wonder if he's, I wonder if he, this bloke's ethnically Greek or something. Uh, Turkish, potentially. Oh my god. It's interesting that a lot of these countries aren't, like, annexing them in full. They're actually puppeting. Surprising. So I imagine that... Yeah, what? I, don't, I can't make sense. The only the, the only way you could roleplay Japan and an African country getting an alliance is that they can somehow bypass and trade valuable resources in. Alright, so... The Conservative Party under Theresa May has successfully bypassed the 2020 election and she's won. Theresa May is doing really well. She's currently expanding English factories after donating new industrial facilities to England. We should also boost their military production. East England will get two military industrial factories, two building slots. It's going to cost 30 billion though. And it will improve their relations with the military industrial complex because she was dragging it down a little bit. Alright, those Gimlars are going to be done in 46 days. Designated special weapons for the forces. That's going to take 365. Improved anti-air weapons. That's probably not a bad play. Argentina really doesn't like us now. North Cyprus, Iran, Abkhazia. So, potentially, there could be a war between the UK and Argentina again. Over the Falklands. They are currently at war with Venezuela, which is surprising. Alright, we've done two of those now. Money we're doing fine with. Logistics still growing. The UK being incredibly passive in this run. As now we've hit March 2021. Yeah. So, Germany and Iran's war has turned into a stalemate. We've got some smaller other rebel civil wars. Oh my god. The Philippines and the Vietnamese war, they're just sort of trading. <laughs> oh my god, what the hell? Oh my god. They've managed to take out 70k Egyptians? How? Oh wow, they've... Oh no, okay, right. So they've actually taken the cyanide again. they pushed all the way over to here. Oh my god, they actually might be able to defeat them. What the hell? Who's helping them? Oh, the US is guaranteeing their independence. Netanyahu's in charge. Western outlook. I guess he's ruling with Likud at the moment. I guess things could change if he needs to form a coalition. Okay, so we're currently helping out the Scottish infrastructure. With the Scottish civilian workforce back into the factory halls, we should get some military factories started. Two military industry slots. It's going to cost 22 billion. Let's put the Scots to work. Alright, we're currently getting the L87A1 rifle variant.
We're going to be able to expand our strategic fuel reserves in Greater London. Not stopping the oil. <laughs> Greater London is now going to get a naval factory, I guess. Okay. A couple small little wars going on. Nothing crazy has really changed, to be honest. Oh, wait, Japan wasn't the head of the fa that faction? Bizarre. Anyway, it's probably time to wrap things up here today. Hope you've enjoyed episode one of the Hearts of Iron 4 Millennium Dawn modern day mod playing as the UK. Haven't been very influential over these three years, but we've had some crazy wars here today. Turkey, India, Greece going at it, but only time will tell with Theresa May's administration. Ministry. Uh, what's going to happen? Okay, she's going with the British Alliance here now. Oh, okay. A new pact for us and our associate states. The world needs a new British-led coalition. Can we figure out how it stands? Oh, wow. Okay. She's about to create the Anglo-Saxon Alliance. Oh, wow. I wonder who she's going to bring in on that front. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to see more Hearts of Iron 4 on the channel, make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. My name has been Simpsy, and stay tuned for episode 2 coming out the exact same time tomorrow. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.